As we uh, welcome our last few audience members, we're going to go ahead and get started with this morning's presentation. So first of all, welcome to the University of Waterloo. And thank you so much for joining us today and for taking some time out of your, uh, your busy falls to come to campus and do a little bit of exploring and learning and hopefully meeting some helpful people throughout the day like our presenters who will introduce shortly. Uh, hope everyone's been parking okay. Hope you've all made it in, maybe had a warm beverage. Sorry that it's cold today, but at least it's not raining, right? Rain will cause good morning. Um, so yeah, we've got we've got a few presentations for you today, starting off with our, our housing presentation. Uh, so what are the just guarantee housing for incoming first year students? Good news to start things off. And in this next session, in about 30 minutes, followed by a few names. Uh, you'll learn about the difference between our traditional traditional and sweet style housing, um, our living learning communities, meal plans, and supports available to students in residence. And today's session will be presented by Christine McDonald from Kids Housing and Jameson Olheiser from St. Jerome's University. Christine has been working with campus housing since fall of 2021. She works with first year students to stay on top of their needs and document their experiences as they evolve from application to moving in to becoming a campus housing resident and a Waterloo warrior. She also loves talking to parents and supporters, and I'm sure there's going to be lots of that today, Christine. And uh, you'll be able to find her at the campus housing booth in the Student Life Center later this afternoon. So if you do have questions for Christine after the presentation, she's going to be jetting over to the, the SLC on your maps, and you'll be able to chat with her and her colleagues there. We also have joining us today, Jameson Olheiser. Uh, Jameson is the Admissions and Recruitment Coordinator for St. Jerome's University, and will be talking to us today about the University College Residences at the University of Waterloo. So, tons of great options that you're going to uh, learn about today, and I hope you uh, get some answers to your questions and, uh, and have some more questions maybe at the end of this that you'll be able to bring to our experts who are representing campus housing and St. Jerome's and the other university colleges uh, on campus at the event today. So thank you so much, and I'll turn it over to the three of you. Hello everyone, I'm going to do a quick territorial acknowledgement while I'm here. The University of Waterloo acknowledges that much of our work takes place in the traditional territory of the Neutral and Anishinaabe and Haudenosaunee peoples. Our main campus is situated on the Haldeman Track, the land granted to the Six Nations that includes six miles on each side of the Grand River. Our active work toward reconciliation takes place across our campuses through research, learning, teaching, and community building, and is coordinated within the Office of Indigenous Relations. Okay. I'm just going to take this off because there's going to be a little bit of reading. Um, so my name is Christine. Thanks, Laura, for the introduction. I'm from Campus Housing, and for some quick context, Campus Housing is the largest housing organization on campus. We have uh, we moved in about 5,700 students in the fall, with over 5,000 of them being first year students. So the majority of incoming first years do come to live with us. University of Waterloo also has four university colleges, all who offer residence options, and three of those four university colleges are included in the first year guarantee. So Jameson right over there will be going through the colleges and everything that they have to offer. I know there are a lot of questions and we will have time at the end for Q&A. I, um, I also did some question prompts for frequently asked questions, but if anything comes up throughout the next half hour, uh, just be sure to hold on and we'll get to them at the end. Do I live on campus? Uh, this is a big question. I worked at uh, the Ontario University's Fair about a month ago, 
And uh, I know housing might not be top of mind for a lot of students right now, and you know they would approach me and just mm -hmm, not knowing what to ask, and then they say, "Why should I live on campus? Um, what does residents have to offer?" So that's what we will detail. But the number one reason that students do decide to live in residence is for the academic advantage. So 81% of first year students listed academic success as the most important income of living in residence. And we have many supports um, to get students there and to succeed in their first year university and throughout. So we have a research analyst that works with us within campus housing. Her name is Dr. Hen Shalon, and she dedicates all of her time um, to application research, demographic research. She studies uh, students from right down to their faculty, but she also studies uh, student success and student behaviors. So I'm just going to read these just so that um, it's transmitted to you the best way possible. So over five consecutive terms, first-year students living in campus housing consistently show significantly better academic performance than their off-campus peers, which is evident in their GPA. Across three consecutive terms, students residing in campus housing display a greater likelihood of successfully completing their program compared to those living off-campus as displayed by the retention rate. So they were more likely to complete their bachelor's degree if they've started in campus housing compared to those who did not. Um, sorry, this isn't just campus housing, this is <laughs> colleges too. So it's um, having a residence experience for their first year. As per the 2020 National Survey of Student Engagement, students in campus housing reported significantly higher satisfaction levels with their experiences at the University of Waterloo compared to off-campus students. And then those residing in campus housing expressed a stronger sense of belonging compared to their counterparts living off campus. A lot of times when students move in, they'll say it's adulting 101. The average adult undergoes an average of 35 major life changes. And for a lot of you here today, that would be moving out of your childhood home. It would be moving to a new city and starting your university career. It's also a big life change for parents and supporters. Um, it's that one that you can check off your box. So I would like to support you and your students the best way possible. Man is by nature a social animal. Does anyone know who said this? I'll give you a clue. Does anyone recognize this guy? No? So that's Aristotle who said that, and this was in around 400 BC. So uh, he knew that community was um, an important aspect, and it was most likely part of his daily life. I get by with a little help from my friends. Anyone? No one, please. Yeah. My nine year old knew who these guys were. <laughs> so, anyone is welcome within housing at Waterloo. Um, everyone has a place, and everybody has, um, it, it, everyone belongs here. So, it doesn't matter where you're coming from, um, you have the opportunity to make connections and find support through all of our programming that we have at the University of Waterloo and our residences. Uh, we have two arms at, within residence, and that first one would be residence life, and the second one would be residence learning. So through residence life, we offer support in uh, two areas, and that first one would be through um, personal identity, identity support, and the second one would be through social engagement. So we have a full staff of over 300 people, and that's full-time staff and students. And they would work with the students on a day-to-day, week-to-week, month-to-month basis to make sure that they're able to transition and that they're able to find their spot in Waterloo. So that can be uh, residents like Dawn. Uh, Dawns live on the floors in residence. Uh, they uh, do one-on-one -on -one meetings, there would be group meetings. And then Dawn, Dawn's would also um, facilitate community engagement through weekly events, um, booths, bulletins, updates, that sort. And then the residence learning aspect, that would be living learning communities. So at Waterloo, we offer over 30 living learning communities 
through various faculties and programs, and that would be campus housing and the university who house living learning communities. So what they are exactly is uh, you'd be living on a floor or in an arrangement of suites with other people from your faculty or program. So say you're a rec and leisure student living in a rec and leisure LLC, um, there would be people on your floor around you, you would be assigned a peer leader. That peer leader would do a one-on-one -on -one with you when you moved in and they would just set up like a learning program for you and kind of figure out, help you navigate how you're going to um, study, like what sort of scheduling, what your schedule is going to look like, what your new routine is going to be. Um, they would also facilitate group study terms, um, tutoring options, and um, oh yeah, there also might even be opportunities to meet with professors in your faculties with, if you're living in a living room. So the ones on the left are the faculties that campus housing would um, offer, and then Common Grable is below. And then on the right, we have all the living learning communities that Renison and United College offers. So yeah, I see some people taking a quick picture. Um, if you want to talk more about living learning communities and you have other questions, you can also come to the booths in the SLC to get more information. I know it's a hot topic. So how to apply, I know this is a long time um, out in, or it's, it sounds like it's, it's far away away, but the deadline for the first year guarantee is June 3rd. Um, the living learning community question is on the first year guarantee, so I think it would come up number two. So you would just uh, check yes or no if you're interested and then someone will follow up with you from there. So what sort of residence options are you looking at for next year? Uh, University of Waterloo offers traditional style residences, so that is your basic dorm. It could be a single room or a double room, and campus housing and university colleges all offer traditional style residences for students. Next up are suite style. The suite style are like small apartments and uh, they are available through campus housing and we have three different suite style communities for incoming first years. And then upper year, I know this is um, not top of mind, but it does come up a lot. We do have housing options available for students in second, third, fourth year, including grads and families. Um, and they're in a number of different communities. Um, throughout campus housing and the colleges. Uh, housing for upper year students is not guaranteed, however. Uh, so it, just keep it in mind, and if you are interested, uh, you can send us a website, or send us a website, send us an email later on. Okay, so what does campus housing offer specifically? We have a total of eight residence communities. Six of them are first year communities. Uh, they're the ones on the top, Village One, Ronnie Village, and CMH are traditional style. And then Mackenzie King Village, UW Place, and CLV South are suite styles or townhouses. And they are open today for tours, all of them except for Columbia Lake Village South, which is the northwest corner of West Mountain Columbia. Um, but they are all on campus and they're all open um, for tours, and you can go in and see the rooms as well today. So to expand on traditional style residence types, these are your basic dorms. So we would have a single room option, a double room option, or a semi-private double. Semi-private doubles exist in uh, Claudette Miller Hall, and they have a dividing wall that's, um, that's more like a privacy barrier between two students in a double room. So it is an open double room, but there is a wall in the middle. These rooms call, come fully furnished, and um, outside of the room, there would be a shared bathroom in the hall. It could be shared with three or more people. And then um, there's also common areas in traditional style residences. So down the hall, there might be a common room for your floor. On the main floor, there could be uh, gyms, there could be uh, spiritual rooms, there could be music rooms. There's a lot to offer. Traditional style residences, the meal plans here are mandatory. So there would be an eatery, or we call them eateries, or cafeterias that are in traditional style residence buildings. 
And next up are our sweet spouse or townhouses. 35% of incoming first year students can end up in a suite style residence. They are also fully furnished and they have two, three, or four bedroom suites. Uh, a lot of students get really excited when they see the two bedroom suite option, thinking they're to meet them and the friend, but they actually house three students. So one of the rooms would be a single room and then the other room would be a double room. So one room with two beds. Within the suites, there are kitchens. You have your own kitchen after cooking, and there can be one to two bathrooms and a common area. Meal plans are not mandatory in suite style residences, so there could be the option of some cost savings there. Um, but a lot of students do get an optional meal plan, and they would just travel across the road to the eatery in one of our traditional style residences. So, if a student is in Mackenzie Canoe Village, there's um, there's Red Bonnet Village on one side and Village One on the other, and students can access those cafeterias uh, all day long from Monday to Sunday. So here's a look at the investment. Um, all of our rooms have different pricing. Um, and just to keep in mind, this is pricing from last year, and this is going to change for the next fall. But um, I broke it down month per month if you wanted to compare these prices to those off campus, um, and also included the meal plan. So this is an average meal plan. Uh, there would also be a light meal plan and a hearty meal plan. So. Prices do, do vary from room to room, as I mentioned. We have um, a full listing of pricing on our fees page, and that is broken down for single rooms, double rooms, interconnected rooms, every single option available. Okay, I'm going to hand it off to James. Okay, thanks, Christine. Good morning. So I'll be over the next few slides just chatting about the university colleges, which are also residence options that you can select at the University of Waterloo as well. So over the next few slides here, I'll just go through each one individually. But first, before we start, um, I just want to make note about the location of the university colleges. Um, so a common misconception that some students do have is that the university colleges are satellite campuses. This is actually not correct. They're actually within the University of Waterloo campus, just to the west end. And so very centralized to the University of Waterloo, they're very close to a lot of arts buildings, environment, and science buildings. And they're actually so centralized to Waterloo, they're right across the street from the Student Life Center and the Physical Activities Complex. So some of those student services buildings as well. So a few other things that I want to just notice commonalities between all the university colleges, um, they're going to come with all you can eat meal plans. And so that's going to be included in your student fees when you pay them um, up front. And so those all you can eat meal plans are very beneficial for students just in with regards to um, having that included in their fees. Um, also, what's included with that university college experience is that close to knit community. So you'll notice that many of the university colleges focus on different areas, whether it's music, piece of conflict studies, on arts, on arts and business, but they'll also have that residence component that is open to all students at the University of Waterloo. So whether you're interested in engineering, uh, science, environment, health, math, uh, arts even, whatever it may be, you can still apply to the university colleges. They're open to all undergraduate um, students at Waterloo. Again, they're located at the heart of the Waterloo campus, and there are three of the four university colleges that are incorporated within your first year residence guarantee. Those include St. Jerome's University, um, Renison University College, and United University College. Those three are included in the first year guaranteed residence application, which Christine will be mentioning a little bit later on. The only one that does not is Conrad Grable. Now, Conrad Grable is still an option that you can absolutely select in a phenomenal residence. It is just a separate application, and that application can be um, completed, and you'll find out if you got actually Conrad Grable for um, that residence specifically prior to actually um, uh, the due date for your first year residence guarantee option there. Okay, so um, we're going to start with Renison University College and what makes them uh, uh, distinct themselves. So they actually have the lowest student to Don ratio on campus here. So they have one, um, of the ratio is one to 22 students for um, a singular Don. Does anyone know, out of curiosity, what a Don is? Show of hands. Some of you might have actually been Dons. I'm looking at the pants there. Okay, a few of you know what a Don is. So for those of you who don't, 
Um, a DON is typically an upper year student to support um, first year students as they get to residence. So connecting them to different supports on campus, whether that's the Writing and Communication Center, um, and really just being that upper year student support. And so Renison has one of the lowest student to DON ratios and is why they stand out in that regard. Another few things to consider here is that Renison University College also has three living learning communities. And Christine mentioned this a little bit earlier on as to what those include. But those are social development studies, um, Warriors Academic Leadership Community for Varsity Athletics, and also um, the Bridge to Academic Success in English, also known as BASE, and that's the third living learning community there. Um, I will go through all the things here because you can definitely see them on screen, but again, other ways that Renison stands out is through their paid and volunteer leadership opportunities and their different residence styles that we do have. Um, United College, moving on to the next one here. So United University College um, stands out just with regards to their different unique residence rooms. So with dividing partitions that separates their study areas from their actual sleeping areas, for instance, um, there's one Don to every 25 students. So again, a low student to Don ratio, which definitely students um, enjoy that as well. Um, that all you can eat meal plan is still in effect, especially for United University College too. Um, and there's many different involvement opportunities at United University College, whether it's through um, the Green Team, or Residence Council, or even through Wings Varsity Basketball, um, uh, their Team Rooster Club as well. Okay, our third university college, uh, St. Jerome's University, we're actually the only uh, residence um, on UW's campus that has its own gymnasium actually attached onto our sixth floor residence building. Um, so for students who like to play basketball and volleyball, things like that, that's hugely beneficial for them. But again, that's not going to be the only thing you need to St. Jerome's. There's many different student study spaces. There's a music room as well there. Um, and there's even a kitchen called the Buttery. And so that is open to students after hours after the cafeteria closes, um, just as a kind of kitchen space for students to warm up meals and so forth. And so that's hugely beneficial in that regard. Um, we house around 400 students, um, and we allocate them to both single and double style rooms. Um, and again, that all you can eat meal plan is still in effect there for all the university colleges and different um, leadership opportunities and um, uh, opportunities for students to be involved in residence as well. Okay, last but not least, we have Comrade Grable. Um, Comrade Grable, you notice right off the bat, just from the pictures there, um, very large double rooms and also um, very um, spacious rooms themselves just because they have modular furniture. So you can move this furniture around and they have um, great big bay windows as you can see on screen there. Um, so those bay windows let a lot of natural light in, so students really benefit from that. Um, and there's also different um, uh, residence uh, facilities and amenities available to students here too, whether it's through a fitness space, um, through beach volleyball, we have a beach volleyball court, um, we have a chapel there, various student study spaces, and a newly renovated cafeteria as well. So um, a lot of different areas for students to be involved, whether it's through service trips, um, music opportunities as well, like talent shows, games nights, um, and different clubs. So again, um, depending on which area you want to go to for university college will really depend on yourself and what, you, um, what you're interested in. Um, whether it's those different opportunities to be involved, whether it's the different residence room styles that you prefer, um, but there are quite a few that you can choose from. Okay, so these um, will be divided up and will differ depending on the university college that you do select, and it also depends on the um, residence room that you select as well. So whether you're going to a single residence room or a double style, um, those are the fees that apply in there. Just remember um, that our fees are also included with that meal plan. Okay, so that's an all you can eat meal plan included in those fees. Um, and then we've also divided that up into monthly um, fee payments as well that you can kind of determine there just to get a baseline. Um, so again, this is an investment much like your tuition and academics, so is residents with getting those great uh, residence experiences, meeting new faces, um, and kind of being involved um, in your residence community and getting um, kind of that great university experience as you go. Okay, I will pass it back over to Christine. Okay. Our next step. So what I am going to recommend that everybody does uh, today um, is take a tour and um, included in campus tours are housing tours and I recommend you tour one or two buildings um, within campus housing and visit the colleges as well. So you have a good idea of what you're looking at and what to expect for next year. Um, what else do we have? If you can't come um, into our residences today, you can always come back next March break open house. Or for you at Waterloo Bay, if you're deciding to come to the University of Waterloo, 
All of our residence buildings are open for tours on open house days and New Waterloo Day. But on regular tours through the visitor center, there may only be one or two buildings open for tours. So if you um, just wanted to get a general idea, you can come any day, but um, if you want to see all of them, you can come on the open houses. And I will be at the SLC the rest of the day. The SLC is a student life center in the middle, in the middle of campus. Um, as the colleges will be there as well if you have any other questions. So it was mentioned at the beginning that we do have a 100% residence guarantee at Waterloo. Uh, not all universities offer this, but we definitely do. So what that means is that as long as you apply or the student applies by the deadline of June 3rd, 2024, they will be guaranteed a bed at your residence. Something important to add to, if there are any accessible housing accommodations, um, they are to be submitted with uh, within the June 3rd deadline as well. So if you do decide to live with campus housing, you'll be sent a campus housing preference form a few weeks after uh, the, the guarantee closes. And the campus housing preference form is you, where you will tell us what type of residence community you want to live in. Um, also, if that would be like a single room you're looking at, a double room. Uh, if you would like to live with a roommate, if you have a roommate in mind from home or anywhere else, you would include that information here including um, any meal plans that you, the meal plan that you're interested in. Something we also go through here are more behavioral characteristics, um, what your routines are. We're just trying to get an idea of who you are, how um, social you are, and maybe like what your study routines so that we can pair you with a roommate or a sweet mate um, that suits you. And then finally, um, I know it's, pretty overwhelming and there's so much being thrown at you right now, but I really hope you're getting excited. When moving into residence, it can be very intimidating, but um, just know that when you do come, there's always, there's gonna be a place for you here and everyone is, it's gonna be new for everyone and everyone will be a warrior. So yeah, we look forward to having you. Oh, sorry, question. Thank you so much. Sweden and Jameson. Um, so I hope they had a lot of your questions answered already by the great content in that presentation. But there's so much to know when it comes to uh, to residents and so many different aspects of the University of Waterloo that I'm sure you have more. It sounds like we had a hand up in the audience already. So <laughs> oh, you see that there. Perfect. So we can you can go through these questions to start things off if you'd like to. Um, so here, yeah, first question here. Do men and women live together in residence? Uh, okay. Um, men and women, uh, they do live in the same residence communities, communities as, each, as each other, but we do not assign roommate pairings or sweetmeat pairings um, with both sexes. So it would be um, just women in one room or just women in one suite. Thank you for that one. And this is a very important one. Do we have to clean our own bathrooms? Although I think that's a life skill everyone should learn. It is a life skill everyone should learn. Um, if you are in traditional style residences where you would have shared bathrooms across the hall from you, those are cleaned daily by our team. However, if you're in a suite, students are responsible for cleaning their own bathrooms. And we may have to do um, some Instagram videos at the beginning of the year to teach students how to do this, but it is a basic life skill. Yes, I'm sure any and all uh, help with some construction that would be appreciated by our students of the yeah. Um, So recognizing that students these days have having different dietary needs and accommodations, will the different cafeterias be able to accommodate students needs? Sure, yeah, yeah, so the short answer is yes. So we're very um, adaptable to different dietary restrictions and so forth. Um, and different university colleges, for instance, will have um, different dietary restrictions that we accommodate, whether it's gluten-free, vegetarian, vegan. Um, yeah, if you want to add on. Um, I mean, campus Housing has a residence dietitian on campus, so if there are any allergies or um, dietary accommodations that need to be met, we will put you in touch with our dietitian and she can prepare you for uh, what you can experience or what you can see in our theories for the upcoming year. I think uh, a lot of our campus chefs are also very friendly and like getting to know students as well. So if they want to chat with them to maybe request uh, a favorite meal at home or something like that, maybe that's a dietary. 
Uh, all right. Um, can I live with my friend in a suite on campus? This is a popular question we get around today. Yeah, so um, our suites, are, once again, are, are like the apartment style. We have two, three, four bedroom suites. You can only make one roommate request coming into campus housing as a first year student. However, as an upper year, you can make up to three roommate requests um, if you're interested in living in a suite. With Yeah, so you can make remain requests for university college, um, uh, university colleges as well. Um, as far as I know, you'll have to just double check with the specific university college you're looking into. I know for St. Jerome's, it's not always guaranteed. We try and do our best for specific remain requests, uh, but it'll just depend on the university college specifically. Yeah. Now, students can't claim a spot in residence until they have an offer of admission, and for some programs and some students that might go out as early as January, but for most of our offers of admission, those go out in May. So sometimes we get students panicking and thinking they're going to miss out on uh, on the best residences or miss out on the spot in residence. Uh, but can you explain, is it a first come, first serve kind of process for residents? Uh, no, it is not. So as long as you apply by the June 3rd deadline, um, you will be guaranteed a spot and you will be prioritized over anyone else. So it doesn't matter if you apply February 1st when the application opens or June 2nd. Um, we also don't prioritize faculty, which is a common residence myth. So um, it, it's really over any faculty, and we don't prioritize students based on their grades, which I know is a thing at some other uh, universities. Uh, and so we've got that June 3rd residence guarantee deadline that you mentioned. What happens if a student misses that deadline? Um, if you miss the deadline, it is not the end of the world. You can apply for a vacancy application, um, and that opens the day after the first year residence guarantee closes. The vacancy application is not guaranteed, though, so we really stress the June 3rd deadline, and it's a hard deadline. <coughs> so that guarantee is really a guarantee only up until the deadline. Yes. Because that, you can apply, but no guarantee. Right? And um, for students who have medical conditions that ex uh, affect their, their experience in residence and maybe they have specific needs, um, what, what should they do to ensure that they're accommodated? Mm -hmm. We do have uh, an accommodations team and we request that you submit any sort of accommodations with the June 3rd deadline um, so that we have the space and the capacity to meet those um, accommodations. So that includes medical documentation, and that could be um, medical or sort of physical, emotional, sensory, anything. Um, if, if you do have any of these in, um, that are concerned to you, just uh, email us at housing at uwa.ca and we'll address them. So, thank you for that. And uh, I'm confident we'll have some questions from the audience, but I have a question for the audience, first of all. Any alumni here who lived in residence? No one in the back there? Three. Three of us. Amazing. Rene Village myself, which is a residence that's double room dorm style. Absolutely loved it. Can't recommend it enough. Great social atmosphere, but again, wonderful options across campus and then university colleges too. Okay, what questions do we have? Yeah, you have your hand up first. Yeah, so. Oh, yes, we've got a microphone. Okay. <laughs> okay. I yeah. uh, so uh, during the term, of the call, what happens with the residency? Should we evict all the belongings or it stays there? Do we pay on the meal plan and everything? Or like yeah, that's an excellent question. So when students are on a co-op term, what happens with residents? And I'll send us the number for students. Yeah, so um, some of you may will become familiar with four stream and eight stream students. So eight stream students come in for the fall and winter term, and four stream students come for the fall and spring term. If uh, you are a four stream fall spring student and you have a co-op in the winter, you will be assigned a room for the two terms where your classes are, and you will move out. Um, you will move all your belongings out for the winter term. You do have housing for co-op students. So um, if you find yourself with a, a co-op in the Waterloo region, you can always apply to live on campus for that term as well. Great, great. And let Carrie be our running here for the next question. 
You're going to be working out today, Carrie. This is the first of three. I'm just curious, when do you find out what style suite, if you choose to have a specific style housing, <laughs> when do you find that information out, whether you get what you're looking for? Is it a lottery? Is it um, so we call them preferences, um, and the campus has a preference form. You let us know where you would like to live. A lot of students get their first, second, third choice of preference. Um, some students do not, but you will learn. Um, you will receive your room assignment in July of next summer. The Oh, okay. um, is there, are there fridges in each room or just the students have to bring their own? So the question was, are there fridges in each room or are students expected to bring their own fridges? Yeah, so depending on the residence that you're heading into, so if it is one of the university college residences, um, some of them will have fridges inside the residence rooms, some of them will not. Um, so all the residence rooms at St. Jerome specifically, yes, they do have many fridges in them. Um, but that's not the case for all of the university colleges, so in large part it's just going to depend on the residents you're entering into. Campus housing does not offer many fridges to students, um, so that's something that students will work in. Sweet styles. Sweet styles have a full kitchen, so fridge, stove, um, oven, all that. Um, so for second, third, and fourth year, um, are those done by first come, first serve, or are those just like randomized? Yeah, those are, um, those group assignments are offered on a first come, first serve basis. We do recommend that students, if you think you want to live on campus for second, third, and fourth year, we just recommend you apply as soon as the application opens for, um, like, your best chance of being offered. Students who, who apply, you know, the first few weeks, um, usually get group assignments. And that is that usually like in January for the fall? Yeah, fall? yeah that will open. It opened January last year, and we're looking at January again. Yeah. Thank you. So for the university colleges, is it only is it a place only for residents, or we will you take our classes in the building too? Yeah, great question. So as I mentioned, and you probably caught on there, so they're actually academic institutions as well. So um, just to kind of break that down a bit, so Renison and St. Jerome's University, um, students can actually enroll at those two institutions as well in honors arts and honors arts and business through what we call co-registration and that enrollment piece. Um, you still complete a Waterloo degree and you still complete one of those co-op systems if you choose that. Um, so there is an academic component in that regard, and then there will also be classes there too. So for instance, Renison specializes in social development studies, St. Jerome specializes in 10 liberal arts departments there as well, whether it's legal studies or sociology, and then for United University College and Conrad Grable, they don't have an actual enrollment piece to it, um, but they actually will hold classes there, um, university one of the classes. So whether it's Conrad Grable, they focus on music and peace and conflict studies, um, United University Colleges focuses on, um, say, you know, things like business studies, uh, entrepreneurship as well. So you might find your classes in there, even economics classes potentially too. Yeah, good question. As a as a Waterloo student enrolled on main campus, or you know, they're all on the main campus, but I got to take a lot of courses at the University Colleges, and it's great for that kind of small environment too. So really, anyone can engage with the universities in many different ways. Um, is there opportunities for financial aid? And where would you go about them? So um, I guess I can take this because it's a little bit uh, separate from the, the discussion of resident. So uh, we do have many scholarships and bursaries offered by the University of Waterloo. Um, the good news is that most of our scholarships are automatic based on grades. Um, but if you fill in the admission information form when you apply to the University of Waterloo, uh, it can also be considered for additional scholarships on top of that that might look at your grades as well as the extracurriculars that you share on that AIF. Uh, in addition, some of our university colleges have their own scholarships. We have a lot of kind of external donors to the university who have scholarships. So if you Google Waterloo Scholarships Database, there's a really helpful um, website where you can search according to the year you're going into, the program that you're interested in, and several other different markers and identity qualifiers and that sort of thing. And you can kind of see everything out there that's uh, that's available to you. So that's something that you can you know start looking at in, in the fall term of grade 12 as you're looking at universities or even younger if you'd like to. 
Um, the earliest deadlines for some of those scholarships that do require applications is, I believe, um, early February. So um, you don't necessarily have to have an offer to Waterloo before you apply for those scholarships. Uh, but I would say most deadlines are usually around April of your grade 12 year. So something to, to look into now yeah, for sure. We also have a representative of Student Awards and Financial Aid at the Student Life Center today, if you'd like to learn a little bit more about that. If um, the students sign for a meal program, um, of course, they will not be eating every day at the cafeteria. Is there any way that the excess amount for the meal will be carried over to uh, the next semester or? Yeah, that's board? exactly what happens. So if anything's left over, you can use it second year, third year, the only year, walk card um, until it's depleted. So upon graduation, uh, the excess will be funded? Uh, upon graduation? Yeah, that is correct. Yeah. Thank you. Trying not to run. Sorry, another question from me. So the student, um, the, the school of pharmacy, that's on a different campus. Is there any residency in that area, or do you know, just the only area? Does that make sense? Um, that would be an off-campus housing arm. We do accept um, applications from students who are in the school of pharmacy, um, but it, because it is uh, downtown Kitchener. Um, it would be a short commute on the LRT if you like the option, but there also would be often these options. I will get to everyone at home. Just to make sure, um, even if students already live in Waterloo, there's still guaranteed a uh, place on campus. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we have a lot of students from the region who choose to live on campus for their first year. It's definitely helpful. Sometimes it's a student's choice, sometimes it's a parent's choice. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any questions we can answer? Hi. For the arts and business program, um, she chooses the traditional housing, which would be the closest. Did you want to go through that program? Um, yeah, so you're wondering which residents would be the closest to their academic buildings? Yeah, so in large part that will depend. I would I would say leaning towards the university colleges would be some of the closest residences to a lot of arts buildings, um, especially environment and faculty of science as well, um, where some of the closest residences to there specifically. Um, but that is in large part as well kind of beneficial just because of that co-registration piece for enrollment is also beneficial because if the residence is there, you're also close to your academic buildings too. So. Nothing is really more than a 12 minute walk and in your first year you'll have classes all over campus. So I'd probably say like go with a residence community that you know best suits you and your needs rather than if it's gonna be a you know five minute walk or an eight minute walk. Mm -hmm. Um hi. If I apply for a scholarship that's offered by Waterloo, do I only win it if I have any? Yes, that's correct. So if it's a scholarship offered by Waterloo, you only get to access that funding if you do end up being admitted registered to Waterloo. I'm sorry, I arrived a little late. Where did you go for the residence tours? Did you go to residence tours? Yes. Yeah, so residence tours for the university colleges specifically can, um, I would direct uh, individuals just to the yellow university college tents, that line kind of ring road on the west hand side. So in front of the Student Life Center and in front of Environment One. Um, from there, you'll be guided to the university colleges to tour and then for kids housing. Yeah, if you want to tour campus housing, we're just north of the yellow uh, college colleges tent. So up Ring Road, you'll see a black tent and there will be tours going up from there. We do have time for one more question. Are students allowed to bring um, fans or heaters into the rooms? Fans or heaters? Can you bring those into your residence? Um, we do restrict some things coming into a residence. Fans are okay. Um, but heaters, nothing that um, they eat. Our residence buildings are quite warm. <laughs> and cozy. Very cozy. All right, everyone. Well, thank you so much for joining us for this presentation. <laughs> Over here, but if you have questions about housing, you can uh, head over to the Student Life Center or to the University of Colorado to ask us.
ya. Nah, 